Welcome to the Sleepy G Show. I'm your host, Remos. My name is Gomez, and tonight I have a talented singer from a really, truly awesome rock band that's very gritty. It's got this awesome, like, Led Zeppelin swampy style, but the gentleman's voice, the lead singer, Tony Cavino. I will explain this later, but I want to introduce Tony to the show. Tony, how are you tonight? Doing great, Alex, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. Thank oh, you. man. I, I'm so excited. Uh, I know Jimmy uh, with uh, Fret Bar Records, man. He's yeah. he's the one that helped me help, help me out. Uh, I lost a little bit of a contact because I know he's been going a little crazy. Some things are going on uh, yeah. with Fret Bar, and I'm excited to hear what's going on. I cannot wait to hear the announcements when they're when he's due. Uh, but I also know he's a podcaster, uh, which is kind of cool. And a uh, much big respect to Jimmy on that note with that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Jimmy's got a lot going on, um, you know, with with the, you know, we're, we're with Fret Bar Records, which is Jimmy's label. And uh, Jimmy's awesome, man. You know, since we met him, he's been gold, you know, and he, he's been helping us so much. And we really appreciate everything he does for us. Oh, I, I say he's he truly an honor. I talked to him on through email. He's been a true gentleman. He's like, Alex, get back to me on Monday. I'll, you know, I'll talk to you, see what we could do. Um, mm-hmm. He wanted to record last. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I got a recording Tuesday, but listen, can we do Wednesday? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll work it out. Don't worry. Um, so <laughs> yeah. very, very honored. But I got to tell you, man, listening to the songs, I got to admit, I, first of all, love the guitar riffs, the beats, the singing is just so unreal. But I got to tell you, when I first heard you sing, you got this Chris Cornell voice. And I know it says it, but I even before I even looked at anything you up, I go, wow, he's got this Chris Cornell voice. Now, I got to admit, hey, that's very scary and very good because I loved Chris Cornell listening to him through Soundgarden. And then when he went to Audio Slave, you know what I mean? And yeah. and he did a couple of songs with uh, Temple of the Dog with chester uh bennington from uh, lincoln park right so th- my genre is this you know what i mean so man listening to you is just it's very poetic my friend i gotta say that well first that's that's a high honor man because uh you know chris is uh one of my uh one of my guys you know what mm-hmm. i mean um so i i really appreciate that and uh yeah he's he you know he was a legend and his voice was amazing, soulful, and you know you could you could hear the passion in his voice when he sang, and and that's that's what I try to do. Um, I try to bring a little bit of everything that I'm a fan of, mm-hmm. um, and 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 bring it out in my own style. So I really appreciate that because he was definitely one of my guys. You know? Right, right. That's and that's something that you know to me pays tribute to him, man. I think you really. If you did one of his songs, I would be, I would probably have the the hairs on the back of my neck stand because I could tell with the passion. With actually one of the songs that I truly do love, besides um, Heroes, uh, I always say "Stain of My Soul." Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you that song hits me every time I hear it. Oh, uh, cool. You know, it's the I hear you with the passion. I mean, all three of the songs that I've heard. On Spotify, you know what I mean? The passion in your voice, my, uh, Tony, is unreal. I oh, mean, listening you. to you is just, I don't know, man. I, I don't know how to describe it, but I'll tell you, if Chris heard you sing, he would be, he would be nodding right next to you, man. And I think he's smiling down at you every day when you're singing. Oh, man, I thank you so much. I mean, I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I... I just try to do my best, you know, and, and it's nice that, uh, you know, people see similarities with, uh, with him and, and, and other singers because, um, they were true artists and they were true singers, you know? And, uh, I, I just really appreciate that, man. You know, I just try my best, but thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. Like I, I love music, you know what I mean? But when I resonate hearing you guys, um, you know, your guitarist, is it Mike, I believe? Yeah, Mike Monster. He's phenomenal guitarist. Yes. You know, when I hear his guitar playing, I hear a mixture of guitar players. Uh, you know, I, I like a little bit of Hendrix, I feel like, a little mm-hmm. bit of, you know, uh, like I can hear a little bit of Queen, Led Zeppelin, but also yeah. 
the the swampy waters of down south Louisiana guitar playing, like an old BB King or old like those old school guys. Yeah. Like you hear it playing. Like I wanna know how you guys got together and made in theory is the question. Well, me me and Mike go way back. We go back we were in a band prior uh years ago. Um, you know, like sort of like we were in that nineties area where it went all the grunge. Okay. And we weren't a grunge band. And uh we 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 actually had a development deal with it. The band was called Big Mouth, and uh, we had a development deal. And then when that whole grunge thing came out, it just everything just fell apart for us, you know, because we we didn't fit that, and that right. wasn't a thing. But um, so I know Mike from back then. Oh wow! So um, you know, and you know, we're brothers in arms, man. We're, we're friends as well as bandmates. Um, but we we put we put um in theory together. I guess it was about four years ago. Okay. And uh, we started writing and coming up, you know, uh, you know, it's like, it's like with me, I have a lot of um, people that I, that I uh, was fond of looking up to. Mike has a lot of mixtures of guitar players in him as well. And he incorporates that into his own style. Mm -hmm. So we sort of wanted in theory to be um, one foot in the past, meaning the seventies, like the old deep purple, the old Zeppelin, that kind of vibe. And a foot in the in the modern in the present. Uh, we didn't want to get we didn't want to sound like anyone. We wanted our own niche, but we wanted to bring some of that old school flavor yeah. to the modern times. And that and that's what in theory is. I'll tell you the you guys this niche that you guys have carved in is unreal. Like I said, uh, you know I think maybe you're the second band with the with the harmony of the female in the background that I know of. You know, you don't hear that a lot. And her voice is so soulful. She has got that old school soul with her, with right. the harmonization with you is just unreal, man. Yeah, that's uh, Lanisha Lattimore. She she actually is background singers for um, Stevie Wonder. Wow. And uh, and also J-Lo. Um, so, you know, we when, when, when we originally came up with the concept, we sort of wanted on certain things that a gospely kind of flair. Yeah. Um, so we were trying to sprinkle in all these different colors. Um, you know, I have the hard rock and vocal, and then in the chorus have a little gospely, you know, twinge to it. Mm -hmm. Not all our songs are the same. I mean, some of our songs are hard edge from start to finish. They right. have no vocals. And some like the river and, and heroes, we bring that out. So I, and you know, and it, and it's great because a band like us, we we can do um, different things. Sort of like a, a you know, like Rival Sons is a similar band, right? Mm -hmm. They they could play at a, they can open up for Black Sabbath, and they can play a blues festival. Mm -hmm. And that, and I think that's the kind of band we are. We we have this the we have the bluesy kind of stuff, and then we have the hard rock and stuff. So we could kind of fit in with any kind of festival, or tour, or any kind of genre. So um, me and Mike are conscious of, you know, when we want to release a single, well, what do we, you know, because we have songs that, that could go right on the metal station. Right. And we have songs that could go on the blues station. Then we have songs that are modern rock. And, and, and they all tie in, but some just accent different flavors more than other ones. But yeah, but getting back to your thing, yeah, Lanish is a, a big part of that uh, vocal sound that we have on there. And and um, she blends well with my voice. And yeah, she does. Uh, yeah, and we incorporate that on some of our stuff. Yeah, definitely. And, and when you guys when you guys harmonize together, it's just, it's very beautiful, man. And, you know, it's, even though, like you said, it's got that gospel, but when you put it like on a good, good rock song or a good blues song, it just sounds unreal. And you yeah. two sound awesome together, man, from, like yeah. I said, the three songs that I'm hearing, I, I'm, it's unreal for me. Like, yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, even if you think about like back in the day, like with uh, the old Deep Purple, right? Yeah. And you had, and you had Glenn Hughes, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, Glenn Hughes had that different quality to his voice. And then you had Coverdale had his quality. And then when they blended the harmonies, it had a different sound to it. It was cool. Like, so sort of like that kind of play. You yeah. Know what I mean? And that's something respectful because, like I said, like the music, it's like you said, like the music of today, you know what I mean? 
I, I, I still gravitate back to the old, old songs for me, you know, like I love Metallica, you know what I mean? But I love their old stuff more than their new stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I deep purple is another great band, Led Zeppelin queen, you know, uh, old school guns and roses when Mm -hmm. they were younger. Um, Audio sleeve. Like I mentioned before the show, uh, I love audio slave. I loved sound garden too, because Chris Cornell, Temple of the mm-hmm. Dog too, because Chris Cornell's voice is was so scary good, like you are, and wow. he, and like I said before, I even read any of the notes, I go this guy, and I said it at work. I'm like, this guy's got the voice of freaking Chris Cornell, wow, and I appreciate that. And that's even before I started reading up on any of the stuff, you know, wow. be- because I was kind of curious when, because Tom from Tag Productions introduced me to Jimmy for for mm-hmm. you guys and he said alex you're gonna love it in theory and i heard the song um uh heroes first and i'm just like wow the voice and i said this guy sounds like chris cornell how do i get him on the show because <laughs> it's he's ridiculously very gifted and i was telling people at work and they're listening to the music they're like you're right he does sound like chris i go i told you like <laughs> like i had this face like i know Wow, that's that that's awesome. And you know, it's it's not I'm not trying to sound like Chris. No, but you're you're but, you. Yeah, I'm you, but I, I have I have his tendencies in me because I'm I'm a fan of his, yeah. right? So we carry around all those things. Robert Plant, Glenn yep. Hughes, Jeb Buchanan, Chris Cornell, Ronnie James Dio. Like you, you kind of wanna that all affects you, right? And exactly. at certain points. Some of that stuff comes out at different times. Yeah. So. It, it's really like my, my niche, you know, like when um Jimmy asked me, you know, from podcasts, like, what is yours? I said, man, I'm a, I'm a guy of every platform, mm-hmm. you know, I can go from uh podcast to podcast, you know what I mean? Talk about other people's podcasts. I could do right. restaurants, right. Uh, video games. Yeah. I, you know, I've had a couple bands on, so talk about the music. Okay. You know what I mean? And talk about the band and everything. Right. And I said, listen, I'm not the biggest guy, but you know what? I'm the, I'm probably the smallest podcast with the biggest heart that goes after anything and everything. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, so you, you, you are truly a fan of what you put on. Like, yeah. are you like a video game? Are you like a band? Are you like a restaurant? Yeah. You, you're, you're a fan of it. You're not just be like, okay, I have to do music all nope. the time and I might have bands on. I'm not really into so that's really cool because I get you know you're a genuine dude and yeah. I can tell like you're a fan of whatever you're whatever you have on your show and and that's the thing you know what I mean I just don't I don't go after you know I don't go after everybody like in the music business you know what I mean I like to get some bands on here because why because I like to hear the music and if uh, if I'm jamming to the music and I'm bobbing my head and I'm actually learning the lyrics that means mm-hmm. I love the music like Heroes yeah. is one of my favorite songs from you guys. Oh, thank you. You know what yeah. I mean? The lyrics are very powerful. The music, again, just unbelievable. You and Mike, everybody, the whole band is just unreal. Yeah, but I mean, Mike as well is also the producer. So he not only plays a guitar and co okay. he's also the guy putting the sound together in the studio. So he's mm-hmm. the producer as well. Um, so, I mean, we co-write the songs and then... That was going to be my yeah. next question. Yeah. Who's who's the uh, the majority writer of songs here? So now that that answers a little bit of my question right there. Yeah, it, I mean the way the way our structure is, and mm-hmm. you know, I mean you got to remember some of these songs were also written during the COVID thing when everybody was locked down. So yeah. he would usually come up on his end with the riffs and stuff like that. Then he'd send them to me, and I would I would come up with you know melody ideas, um, mm-hmm. things like that. And then once we agreed, okay, that's cool, that's catchy, this is good, then I would, then I call it reverse engineer and fit lyrics right. to the attitude and the melody of the music. So that's kind of how we write. Um, and then when we're together, it's it's similar. It's like me and him in a room. He'll mm-hmm. just start playing riffs. And, you know, we might be simple. It might be to a drum machine. Right. And he'll just come up with a cool riff, and I'll just, I hear a melody, and I'll just, and I call it mush mouth because I'm not really singing anything particular. Right. I'm just, ooh, baby, baby, whatever it might be, something stupid. But I'm just getting the melody and the attitude out 
And then I'll worry about when I'm singing later, because if the melody and the riff is good, the, you know, the, the lyrics are just going to go right into place, right. you know. But if you don't, I mean, how many songs do you know that you were singing the wrong lyrics for 20 years? But Holy it's still shit. a great song. Yeah, it's, I I, I, I can name a few already, you know what I mean? Just yeah. you, you were like, well, really? It's that? Oh, my God. Right, right, right. Yeah, and you swore you knew the lyrics. But, I mean, lyrics are important. But, you know, that that melody, that initial passion of the mm -hmm. riff with the melody line, and and I'm a big proponent of what is what is the song like? What kind of attitude do I need right. to portray over these? You know, it could be a dirty riff, you know, like a Jimmy Page kind of thing. Mm. You know, you got to go. You know, so there's times where you got to go balls out, and then there's times where you got to be, you know, melodic. You know, yeah. so the riff, the song is going to tell me as a singer, all right, what's this trying to say? You know what I mean? And that's yeah. something that I, I enjoy because when the band, you know, sit down and like during COVID, it's the hardest time for everybody, you know, um, mm. you know, like myself, uh, my family, you know, my wife, my two children. Well, before when, when, COVID, when COVID started, I had one during COVID. Now I had two. I uh, My son was born during COVID. Okay. So talk about being in a hard place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um son's born in a bubble technically because of what's going on right. you know and i'm looking at him now it's three years later and i'm just thankful he's adjusting because we're finally yeah. taking him out more and more and that's like what what and i hear music in my head thinking what could i do better you know and one of the songs stand on my soul i was thinking about him today and i was hearing that song I'm like all right we're, we're, we got to figure out what's your next point to go out to see where how far we could push it and this right. song was in your, that song was starting to remind me a little bit of what to do with him. You know what I mean? Or, you know, what am I going to do with my daughter later? You know what I mean? It, so, some of these music resonate for like guys like myself, like, you know, is it the passion, the love, which I hear in your voice, Mike's guitar riff, the harmonies, the, the whole band, the drums, you hear the passion your voice carries that passion dramatically in the in the sense of greatness you know what i mean i like i would say if you went against any band right now like i know of like say like a metallica or you know any of these guys that you know even a foo fighters like a dave Grohl, man mm -hmm. i put you up there because of the way you have the passion like these guys do uh yeah well thank you again um yeah i mean that's that's uh that's the ultimate job of a singer right to portray mm -hmm. that vibe into somebody and they could take that i, I call it an emotion mm -hmm. um they could take that and they could listen to the song and they could make it their own like um you know we we or i you know write lyrics that aren't specific they can right. mean something different than what i wrote about mm -hmm. so when somebody tells me oh i heard staying on my soul and reminding me of you know kids or whatever I mean you know my situation that's what the song's about because right. I'm not uh, you know I might have wrote it thinking something else right mm -hmm. but it, that doesn't matter what matters is it 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 it, it, it um, affected you yeah and, and that's the best compliment that that we can ever ask for and yeah. that's one thing I'll say like you know I'm not listen I, I I can't play a guitar I can't play a drum I cannot hold a tune for my life. <laughs> but when I hear good music and I start listening it, you know, I, I love it. And that's something as I could say, a music streamer, you know what I mean? When I find something I like, I stick to it. You know what I mean? Um, right. Like my, this brand of mine, the Sleepy G show, you know, right. uh, I got the hat on, I got the Jersey. I even got sneakers. Nice. <laughs> you know, I actually interviewed the gentleman who made my sneakers last night nice. uh, on the show. You know, he's a, He's a guy out of Pennsylvania. He's very young. He just got out of college. He's engaged. He's making sick sneakers and cleats for the Philadelphia Phillies. Wow. So he's no been way. meeting. Yeah. He's been That's meeting. Like, so, you know, uh, talk about a true inspiration. Yeah. You know, um, I'm also a blogger in heart, too, because I like to write stuff. Okay. And, you know, it's funny. I'm thinking about what inspires people, mm -hmm. you know, and he is a true inspiration because yeah. He's young and he's going. And with your music, you have your inspirations of some of the 
greatest lead singers out there, you know, even in the past or now, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if they're alive or gone, but the, the passion of your singing and how powerful your lyrics are is a, truly a, a compliment to who you are and the band. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, you know, in, in life, I mean, I have two children as well. So mm -hmm. like uh, the twin, twin boys, they're 11. And, okay. Uh, God so bless you. I thank you. And God bless you. Um, thank you. I'm going to so need it. <laughs> we went through that whole COVID thing, but just, they were a little bit older and yeah. they had to deal with the whole, you know, so, you know, there was a lot of that turmoil mm -hmm. that it would come out in the songs that we wrote around that time, that, yeah. that angst, you know, of not knowing what's going on. And even though you're not saying it, it's coming out in your voice. So right. you, you might be picking up on that as well. Like that was my, that's my outlet, right? So mm. I could sing the phone book, but I could sing the phone book with an angst to my voice where you're like wow like you know what i mean like what he's saying doesn't make any sense but i feel it mm -hmm. and that and that that's what i'm trying like all the great singers i believe you know past and, and currently you can feel it you know and um that that's that's what we were going for um, and i could feel it i would say I, that I, personally that, yeah, and, and there's even times, you know, because Mike's the producer, right? So sometimes he puts the producer hat on. And as a singer, we want, always want everything to be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. So, But there was there was just parts on these songs where I I wasn't crazy about the part, but Mike's like, it's got so much passion. You, if you fix it so it's technically correct, it's not going to feel the same. Right. So, and, you know, and he was right. You know, but as a singer, you want everything always to be perfect. Eh, it was a little flat. It was a little sharp. But then getting back to the foot in the past, if you listen to a lot of Zeppelin, you listen to a lot of Deep Purple or Queen, mm -hmm. those vocals weren't perfect either. They, they were, were definitely great. not. They were great singers. It didn't matter. They I mean, could, look, sing, could sing flat. It doesn't matter. I yeah. mean, you know, all, all those singers can sharp, flat. It doesn't matter. They're just great vocals. Mm -hmm. So we, we, purposely kept things in that I wasn't, you know, at the time I wasn't crazy about, like I wanted to do another take or whatever, but we kept it in because it had the passion to it. So I'm glad that that's coming across. I appreciate yeah, it, it is. And like I said, you know, from, and that's what, I, and that's why like for me, when everyone goes, Oh, is this an interview? No, it's not because it's more of a shooting of the hip to get to know you. Yeah. You know what I mean, and, and that's what I was trying to tell Jimmy, like, I'm not an interviewee. This is not, this is me right. talking like two best friends that haven't seen each other in a week and we're just shooting the shit is the best way of saying it. Yeah. And, and that's how I am because I, I don't want to ask 5 billion questions. Right. You know, Hey, let's ask right. the real good questions that we really want to know about and you know, where it comes from. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, and I, I'll tell you, man, like I said, I, I'm so thoroughly impressed. Like I, I, I can actually see you guys live. You know what I mean? It, you probably have one of the best live shows out there just because of the passion. You know what I mean? I could see that being there, you know, not even being there, but it's hearing it and seeing it. I could actually imagine it. Yeah. You, you, you're pretty on point. I mean, we, you know, we come out like we're getting shot out of a cannon, you know, we just pour it all out, you know, whether you want it or not. <laughs> it's coming out. Like, it's going out. You know, it's, it's just who we are as a, personalities you know and, and mm -hmm. the way we write our songs and and you know to do a rock show and and you know we always say there could be 10 people there but we want those 10 people to be fans when we're done you know that kind of attitude um yeah, yeah so, I mean, and, yeah, but yeah you, you're definitely right i mean you know just listening to the songs you can't really patty cake it mm -hmm. um but as well as who we are as people on stage we we you know we want to project the something for people you know because we realize in this day and age just to buy a 15 dollar ticket is a big deal to us that you would want to spend your money and take the time out of your life to come and see us mm -hmm. we, we feel obligated to um give you something right. you know something as good as we can give it to you we're going to give it to you you know yeah and that's something i i'd say seeing the music and he's why you know i actually started following you guys on youtube too um, you know, just so I could hear some more of the stuff, you know, what I mean, see you guys because 
you know, it's hard when you're living in Jersey and you're out in uh I'm not even sure you guys are what in Jer- what part of Jersey? Um Morris County, New Jersey. I'm in I'm on Long Island. So oh so because you're you're not even that far from me. You're on the yeah. island. I thought you were out of, I thought you were at uh Chicago or Nashville with the no, my, Mike's in Mike actually lives in Muscle Shoals. Okay. Um, and uh I'm I'm a, I'm I'm on Long Island, I'm a New York guy, but I I travel you know, to wherever we got to go. Okay. So, okay. Well, I got to give you a lot of respect on that. Well, at least we know we're East coast guys. So that's a good thing, you know? Yeah. We got that that, that attitude. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now you guys just played, I know it's, it's been a few weeks, but you were at July 23rd. You guys had um, a a concert uh, out in Alabama, Florence, Alabama looks like it was. Yeah, Florence. We did we did a show with um, Jared J. Nichols, mm-hmm. um, which is a you know a, an amazing guitar player, blues blues rock guitar player, and we did we did a show together. Um, you know, uh, we did our set. He did his set. Actually, he came up on stage our last two songs, and we did um, you know we did some songs together. Oh, nice, um, but. Um, yeah, it was it was a great show. Um, yeah, Florence, Alabama, which is a place that not really used to rock shows. Right. You know, they used to um, you know, sort of like the the muscle show sound down there is mm-hmm. more blues, more blues, um and stuff like that. And, and we just uh you know, we we've been told by the locals that they haven't seen, you know, a rock show like that come through there in about twenty something years. So right. That's a um, huge compliment too. Man. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so okay, check the box, right? So, yeah, but um, that's huge, though. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know the, the the place is growing, so hopefully there'll be more and more opportunities for bands to go through there. Um, I hope so too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no, it was a great show. You know, the fans were great. Um, we we had a great time, man. It was it was real good, and you know Jared came down and he was great, man. You know he was. Uh, he helped us out, you know, because Jared has a great name in the business. He's a mm. phenomenal talent. And um, he came down to really, you know, just say, you know, I'm here for you guys. And we, we really appreciate that. And that's something, like I said, like, uh, you know, for me, I follow everybody because why? Because I, and I keep in touch with a lot of people because it's not just, oh, I want free stuff. No, no, no. I actually want to know how it's going. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I'll literally I can say, hey, Jimmy, I just want to see how. 20 guys are doing i could send him an email or i could send you a message yeah you know, through instagram saying hey tony how's everything going because i'm just curious you know even yeah. if you're traveling like i had a colossal street jam on my on my show and i talked to gene potts uh yeah. the lead singer and he was on my show we had a great time we had a great connection and i just sent that him an email it's like oh what's up uh i just want to know how you did your show you know i heard you guys killed it you know but i heard metallica was in there but i would prefer over you over metallica any day you know what I mean? Um, but, but it just shows like the respect that I have for everybody, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and, and, you know, and that's important, you know, um, you know, and I like that too, you know, I like, I, I like to make friends with whoever I meet, mm-hmm. you know, cause um, you know, it should be, it should be where, you know, you help us out, you put us on the show. If there's something that we could do for you or any, of you know, any, any one of your buds. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it should work. I mean, we're a community, right? So, exactly. Yeah. And, and and for me, it's like I said, any guests I have on my show is a true honor because, you know, I started this in January of this year on my own. Um, I used to be on another show that I did. Uh, it was all about music, but I, I found my niche as a music but movies, video games, kind of sore and going, mm-hmm. oh, in this song, you know, you know, we picked this song, like Tom Petty, you know, oh, one of these songs around Tom Petty's uh, Jerry Maguire at this scene, you know what I mean? It's kind of right. funny, you know, I found my niche. And that's why, like, for me, a platform of what I'm doing is mm-hmm. what I love because, A, I love, love talking to the band, like yourself, you right. know what I mean? Uh, or, you know, or anybody in the band, but also like to raise awareness for other people. Right. Um, I was blessed that um, an old friend of mine from high school, her son's autistic. She goes, Hey, are you ever going to do a show? I go, I go, I never thought about it, but if you want in, let's just get, let's just get it done. Mm-hmm. You know, I raised awareness of diabetes, type one diabetes for a friend. And she did a huge 31 mile bike ride 
in Vermont this year in nice. July. Nice. Uh, I had a gentleman, a, a retired Marine, uh, who was a police officer down in Texas. His two kids, his twin kids, has uh, cerebral palsy. So I'm reach. I, I like to do everything because it gives <clears throat> other people a chance to talk. Right. You know what I mean? It's not having a 30 second spot on Channel 11 News or a five minute spot. Hey, listen, right. Channel 11 News is huge for in our market. You know what I mean? Like you and me. Right. But for a guy like me, New Jersey, and I'm trying to knock down that New York door, you know what I mean? To say, mm -hmm. hey, I'm here. Right. Look at the look at yeah. the big guy with the smallest cast, but he gets names. You know what I mean? Right, right. I was yeah. very lucky to get four, th four local New Jersey celebrities, you know, nice. that, that used to work for New Jersey News 12. Christina Bear, Cara DeFalco, Marissa Brainy, Don Smith. These were all worked at New Jersey News 12. And we've seen Christina on Channel 11 News before. You know, right. she's filled in with like Jill Nicolelli and all of them. Yeah, yeah. So it's so for me, it's like I, I, I keep in contact with them too. You know what I mean? And they'll say, hey, what's going on? Happy birthday to your son. You know, yeah. and, and that's cool because that, you know, you're making connections, but you're getting a lifetime of friendship too, because like you said, there might be something, Hey, Alex, I need something from you. I need to get on your show for 30 seconds. I got to promote this. No problem. Right. Hey, can you help me promote this? Not a problem. Right. You know, when I sign off tonight and I always do, I, like I put up a thing, you know, I'll put up like saying, you know, another great recording and then I, what i write is who was on there and i mm -hmm. tag everything because i want people to realize like oh my god he's getting his, his name is getting out there yeah you yeah know? yeah yeah i mean you know bands do that as well you yeah. know um you know like if we have the opportunity to open up with an artist that's well known mm -hmm. right of course we're going to use that leverage and and hopefully when we play with them we want to we don't want to just take the opportunity and say hi bye we we want to be friends with them right we'll form a bond so, you know yeah and and if we're on a podcast like i'm on a podcast with you mm -hmm. i like to think that after this you'd like me and we could do it again or we could be friends or we can so i i believe that's the way it is and and mm -hmm. you know it's it's like anything else right there's there's a lot of people doing what you do. A lot of people do what I do. Blah blah blah. blah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the talent, but it also comes down to the personality as well. Right. So if you're a good guy and you have the talent, mm -hmm. like you do, then you know there's always going to be opportunities for you to get you know bigger and better. And you know? I really appreciate it. that. Means a lot too. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I've gotten a lot of compliments because everyone's like, "Oh, I'm scared." Don't I go? Don't be scared. Have fun. You know right. what I mean? It, it, like, and that's something I, I talk about because I feel that as, as a musical band, you know, as you're getting bigger or you're getting spreading out your rings more, you're going on tours longer. You know what I mean? It, things happen. And, you know, sometimes, you know, just saying, hey, how you doing? It, sometimes that means the world to somebody. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Definitely does. I mean, you know, just being nice to people and you know and it could be you know and i'm like that you know like even if we're doing a show and, and there's the guy rolling up the cables for the sound guy man i always i would say hello to everybody yeah. i would say hey dude how you doing what's your name um you know and i you know i'm i'm just naturally like that like Same i just here. yeah and i could tell you are too and um so I, you know listen if you're gonna do it you might as well be nice right and and you might as well appreciate people um that are helping you mm -hmm. or appreciate people that you know doing you a favor and vice versa you know so you know it's like you said it, it it's just another person in your wheelhouse right mm -hmm. so now you keep building that way and then you, there might be some that comes up and i call you but hey dude i got this guy who wants to be on the show you want to do it like you know or yeah. vice versa you know, we, and, we might play a club in Jersey and you might know the owner at a club and, hey, treat these guys the right way. They're cool. And, you know, so listen, it, I, I, and I'll be the first one at the door. I'll be honest <laughs> with you. you. You come in Jersey. I'm coming right at I'm coming right in that show. I'll be there. You know, yeah, because, you know, definitely. you know, the, the, like I said, I've I've listened to a lot of great bands uh, along the way and I've heard, uh, you know, great 
great musicians. I'm, I'm lucky to gone to see as many shows as I did. You know what I mean? I, one of my favorite bands growing up that really hit home to me was always Lincoln park. You okay. know, their music resonated with me and said, same thing with Chris Cornell, right? Because there were songs that where something has happened in my life dramatically. Um, you know, one of the songs from Lincoln park that always stuck out to me somewhere I belong. Uh-huh. And that was one song listening it, trying to figure out where do I belong in this world? Mm-hmm. What am I made to do? What yeah. is my purpose now? You know, mm-hmm. um, I got, I've gotten lucky and I married the most greatest woman in my life. Nice. I have two wonderful kids. I work my hands and feet to the bone at my job. And this, this is not even a job. This is what I do for fun. Right. You know, people do podcasting for money. I don't. I do podcasting because I love it. Uh-huh. I right. love what I do because, like you said, Tony, meeting new people. I could say, hey, Tony, listen, I got a friend of mine. He would love you to be on his podcast. Would you do it? You know, listen, I'll whatever you need me to do for you, I'll do it. You know right. what I mean? You know, right. I, it's like a personal favor. But if you said, hey, Alex, I got... I'm just going to throw a name. I'll just say James Hetfield from Metallica wants to be on your show because he loved the interview he did with me. He wants yeah. you. He wants you to do that. I'll be like, uh, yeah, and you're invited <laughs> too because you're. We're going to have to hang out with him. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. But that that to me that's that's the cool thing. Like, and I could say this, you know, in two weeks I'd be like, hey Tony, just checking in, see how you're doing because I, you know, haven't heard anything. I want to make sure everything's cool. I hope you guys are working good. You know waiting here with the next single or when's the record release is going on. Um, I had just recently blacktop blacktop mojo came on the show. Oh, um, great. Yeah. They, they, we're, we're fans of them. They're, they're Matt, a great. And Matt great came band. on. Uh, we had some uh, technical difficulties on dates and stuff because uh, they're, they're ready for a tour. Um, right. But um, he, right before he went, well, during a tour, he actually let us let me know about, his uh, new record release in 2024. So mm-hmm. I, I told Matt, I'm like, dude, if you guys want to come on and talk about it, like around Christmas time, great Christmas yeah. gift for everybody. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. would be a perfect time. And Tony, yes, you and any other band, even if the band wanted to jump on, you guys are always welcome on this show, man. I I, I appreciate that. And yeah, I mean, those, those are good cats too. You know, we're, we're kind of hoping that we could, uh, you know, get on a couple of shows with them as well. Um, yeah. He's an incredible singer. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I appreciate it, man. I, I you know, I, I can, I could tell you're a genuine cat and um, I like to, I like to be on shows where people are actually into, you mm-hmm. know, what we're doing or the people that we are. And, and, and uh, if there's anything that I could ever do for you, you know, just let me know. I definitely will, man. But listen, just yeah. having you here tonight is a true honor, man. Like, you know, it, like I said, the vocals, the music, everything, you guys are truly awesome band. And, you know, hopefully if you're passing through Jersey uh, for a night summer, even if it's in Asbury Park, I will get there. Oh, yeah. even, if, even if it's a monday night i will drive out yeah thanks man hey yeah, i think um jimmy might be working on something you know some pretty well-known clubs in jersey but okay. nothing's in you know it everything's always a uh, trying to fit things into schedules and who can do what when and but, oh trust yeah, me we, i know we definitely have tri-state area plans i mean i'm, I'm from here and you know all, all my buds around here like when are you gonna play here? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Even like, if I'm it's old... in the city, you know, I, yeah. I'll take my wife with me. We'll we'll get someone to babysit the kids. I'll drive into the city. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna hang out with the band for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> kind of be prepared. You want to do something exciting and new? Here we're doing it. Hey, dude, no problem, man. You know, wherever we're playing, if you can make it, you just let us know and you're uh, in. Oh, definitely, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. You know, like I said, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I know it's late and everything, and you got your family too. <laughs> but you know, Tony. I got to say, it's been a true honor having you on the show tonight. Um, you know, I, I got to thank you for taking your time out, too. You know what I mean? Um, I know this was done pretty quickly uh, on Monday afternoon. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, um, it's cool. I mean, Jimmy Jimmy reached out and, you know, 
you know, Jimmy, Jimmy knows a lot of people and uh, he knows a lot of great people. And, if, you know, Jimmy says, hey, you know, do this, you know, do this podcast. He's a cool cat. I'm, I'm there, man. And, and I really appreciate him asking, yeah. uh, you know, the stuff about me, like, you know, hey, what do you do? You know, because I felt like he was getting to know me, too. So, you know, yeah. I, I'm definitely reaching out to him tonight with an email saying, you know, like, listen, Tony, truly awesome. Um, you know, we're actually going to release you guys. Uh, the show will be released in September. Um, I'll have an infinite date soon. Uh, okay. Cause uh, I got a couple other recordings. I got to go through my, my little black book here, my calendar book. Um, I got to see, I got to move some things around because I want you guys to be in the September show in the September month. Um, oh, cool. Because, you know, uh, in case if something comes up, like shows come up and like say, Hey, be prepared. Um, but Tony, if you could just take a minute, let people know where they could find you guys uh, on, on any platform, of course. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, really, we would like people to go to our website, um, in theory, And from there, you can find all the sites. I mean, we're on all the, you know, the streaming services and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. we really like people to go to our site. And, uh, you know, maybe buy a shirt, buy a CD, because that's how, you know, it helps support the band and things like that. But, um, yeah, you can go to our website or, you know, we're on all the streaming services um, and social media. I know, you know, Fret Bar Records, um, we're on his site as well. Yes. On um, his site. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can go to our site. You could go to Fret Bar Records site. Um, and we're on all the streaming services. Um, you know, it's a singles world. So, I mean, we, we have an album recorded, mm -hmm. um, but we're releasing singles because that's just the way things are done now. So you right. Know, the singles. So right now, Stain on My Soul, we did a video for Stain on My Soul. Um, and that's what we're promoting. We were actually honored to be on Alice Cooper's uh, syndicated show. Oh, wow. Uh, three weeks ago. And because of that, um, and other stations playing us, we we went up to number three on the classic rock chart. I just saw that, man, and, and congratulations. And, and there was two other bands that were ahead of us. I never heard of them, Metallica and Foo Fighters. I don't yeah. know who they are. Yeah, neither yeah. do I. They're just small I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> you know. but, but to see, you know, that. see that. Yeah, I mean, just see that. I'm like, come on, this isn't real. It like, is you know, real. And, yeah. yeah, and you got below the new and upcomer Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll, be that Jelly Roll, Jelly Roll at least and, for that that time slot. Yeah. And, and Disturbed, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, that's huge. I'll take it. It's Listen. just a fraction of a fraction of time. I'll take it. Yes, same here. When I when I <laughs> when I when I'm like even when you know, and it's funny because when Good Pods comes out and it gives mm -hmm. you and and I'm reaching like the top eighty, I'm like, I'll take it. Take it. I, I take it because I'm excited. You know what I mean? You're, you exist. You're <laughs> yeah. there. What's yeah. even funnier is that I don't know how I got posted into the comedy section, but I'm always in the top 20s. So I'll mm -hmm. take that too. I'm like, I'll take it because it's yeah. I'm, I'm getting recognized. That's it, man. And there's going to be many more. So get used to it. Definitely. Without a doubt. Well, listen, Tony, I got to thank you tonight. I, I definitely got to thank Jimmy from uh, Fred Bar Records for uh, hooking us up. Same thing with Tom from... Tag, tag productions these are all guys that are very helpful and leading us to meeting tonight um tony is a true honor because you're a true gentleman and a, you know like i said uh i definitely can't wait to have you guys back on the show later on in time um if you want to bring mike with you on the show i could make both of you guys on this you know what i mean oh um, uh, yeah you know i i definitely i'll even bring if jimmy even wanted to come on and we could have like a good four-way conversation it would be really yeah. cool um, yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Jimmy, you know, your your aces, and you know, I'll, I'll, obviously I'm gonna Michael C. I'll talk to Mike. We'll get Mike on the show if you yeah. if you want Mike on the show. He'll he'll you know he'll do it. I'll, um, I'll you, know, you know I'll definitely whenever you guys want. You know you if you want to come on with him too, it's still an honor to have both of you guys. Even take you and him, I take both. You know, it's a true honor, man. Because uh, like you said, it's hard to find good people like us and you know and i truly enjoyed the conversation i definitely will keep in touch um yeah. without a doubt man you know and uh, uh like i said i can't thank you enough uh really uh, really no, appreciate it no, thank, thank, thank you uh i you know 
I uh, I really appreciate you reaching out and having me on. And um, you're you're a great guy, man. Just just by this short conversation we had, like mm-hmm. I could tell. You know what I mean? And and anything that you would need from us or whatever. Jimmy has all my contact info. If you want to call me, you could text me. Cool. I'm around. I'll I'll tell Mike about it. We'll get him on the on the show. And um, let's just uh, you know, let's let's keep this thing rolling. Oh, we definitely will, man. Well. Like I said, I, I got to thank the band. I got to thank everybody for coming on. And thank you, everybody, for listening to the show. Um, as I always end my show, is nothing but love, peace, and happiness, everyone. And I got to thank everybody. And I'm going to say it. Good night, everybody. Good night, man. Thank you. Thank you.